on our Future Stars Friday program. This is the Nyquist six and a half furlongs for two-year-olds. Let's go upstairs to track announcer Kurt Becker. Last horse moving into line. They are at the post. And they're off. There's Awesome Jerry. Quick Tempo has early speed. Roderick kicks in down toward the inside as well, but Quick Tempo will have that early advantage and leads it by a length up the back stretch. Roderick goes second. There's Safas Day far outside. Now taking third, Awesome Jerry. Fourth between horses, highly motivated. Fifth down toward the inside. And then up striker sixth, Sir Wellington seventh. Assertive style is last of the eight. The opening quarter, 21.73 seconds. Quick Tempo leads it by a length to the far turn. Roderick inching forward down toward the inside. Then Safas Day back toward the outside in third. Highly motivated, clings to the rail in fourth. Still running, nearly five lengths off the lead. Gap of three. Sir Wellington moves up the inside in fifth. Has some work to do from there as they round the far turn. Quick tempo leads it by a length and a half. Here comes Highly Motivated, starting to change lanes from third, switching toward the outside. Roderick is there in second between that pair. Roderick now gets right alongside of Quick Tempo. Highly Motivated, still two lengths away but coming from the outside final furlong of the nyquist highly motivated just striding forward to take the lead for javier castellano it is highly motivated who will take the opener quick tempo hung on for second and then it was roderick across the line in third gonna be close for fourth either awesome jerry from the outside or sir wellington toward the inside Highly motivated, the Keeneland grad, the son of Into Mischief, gets the victory in the Nyquist today under Javier Castellano. Post position didn't play any part for him today. He was in a different race, bottom line, because the race was between the two and the six, and the six ran a big one to hold off the late charge of Roderick, who for a second looked like he was going to get there, and Quick Tepo held on. But once Javier Castellano got this colt out into the clear, it was game over. He was in a different level than these horses here today. Chad Brown striking early and doing so from the rail, something that we talked about is not easy. Highly motivated, well done as he draws off in the Nyquist stakes. Silks of Clarevich Stables will get their pictures taken for the first of 10 races today and be well represented throughout championship weekend here. Here's one more isolated look at highly motivated the son of into mischief out of the Warriors reward mare strong incentive bred by his owners. So as we kick off Breeders Cup weekend certainly an appropriate victory here. Yeah, Seth Klarman has been a long supporter of this game and uh, campaign last year's Horse of the Year. Bricks and Mortar, who took the Breeders' Cup turf at Santa Anita, copy, capping off that uh, Horse of the Year campaign. And uh, this one, as you mentioned, a Keeneland November sales graduate from 2018. He returns home and now is a stakes winner. 162 unofficial, just waiting out the photo for the fourth money. Quick tempo held on despite fast early fractions. This was a gutsy effort from him in defeat today in the third start of his career. We heard from Chris Davis uh, prior to the race. And what a turnaround in form for Roderick. Yeah, Roderick ran a big one. He, he was more forward in this race. He had himself in a good position. And I read, wrote, wrote a very crafty race. He was down on the inside. And about just prior to the quarter pole, he was able to work his way out and get himself in that striking position. He just didn't have enough to get back, uh, get past quick tempo. But as we've mentioned, highly motivated. Another Keeneland graduate picking up a stakes victory here in 2020. A $240,000 sales graduate from the Keeneland November sale of 2018. And the Keeneland November sale is just around the corner as that will get underway on Monday. There's a look at that photo result for the Superfecta if you played it. Also the Super High Five. One, six, two, eight, and five across the board. And we kick off the pick five with a lukewarm favorite in here. Highly motivated your winner. And at uh, the final call there, five to two at post time as the choice in the first race on Future Stars Friday. Here's a look at the son of Into Mischief. He's striking. And we've talked a lot about his size in the lead up to this race. You'd have to think that not only was he accomplished today, but as the distance has progressed, this horse is one that will go on. There's no question. The way that we saw him draw away from this group, the way that we saw him settle as well earlier,
early on in this race. There is no doubt that he will be stretching out to longer distance races. And this is a horse, you know, I know we've got the big races coming up later on, the two-turn race in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile, headlined by Jackie's Warrior and Essential Quality. This is easily a colt that we could be talking about in New York on the road to uh, some of those big three-year-old races in 2021 for Chad Brown and Clarevich Stables. We didn't really see anything from Upstriker today. Early favorite in here, just never made an impact. He was out running. They are at the post. And they're off. Far sighted, broke alertly. Guana Key is right there. Joy's Rocket kicking in now. Joy's Rocket moves up to take the lead. Keyless turn is up close. There's California Lily far outside. And again, far sighted right there to press the issue. One lane off the rail in that four way shuffle for the lead. Guana Key drops back into fifth. Music City Star moves by from sixth to her inside. Rocks Princess seven, thinking is eighth. Off we go ninth. Lady Edith is tenth down toward the inside. Taylor's Tourist is eleventh. The grass is blue, is twelfth. Princess Tapature is in 13th position. Novel Squall last of the 14. 21.93 seconds. The time for the opening quarter. Joy's rocket against the rail, leading far sided by a half length. Another length and a half to Keyless Turn and third by a head. Music City Star moves up to her inside. Now takes third by a neck off the far turn. Guana Key is out in the center of the track in fifth. Still nearly 10 lengths off the lead. Joy's rocket chased by far sided. They go one, two into the stretch. Then a gap of seven more lengths back to Guana Key. Off we go, who's there toward the outside. But in the final furlong, it is Joy's Rocket opening up on Farsighted by two and a half lengths. Joy's Rocket past the 16th pole, Farsighted in second. Then Rock's Princess, it is Joy's Rocket, Ricardo Santana Jr. to win it. Farsighted was second, Rock's Princess across the line in third. Then it was Guadalquivir in fourth. Off we go, cross the line in the fifth position. Joy's rocket, a rocket at that. Speedy from the get-go, and she never looked back today. Yeah, turning back from a mile in a quickly run race in the grade one Frisette, she had the stamina to just keep on rolling along because at one point in time, it looked like Farsighted, who was coming off of that impressive seven-length win at Keeneland, was going to be able to put herself into the race and go with her, but she could not. Once Ricardo Santana Jr. asked for something from this daughter of Anthony's Cross, she absolutely dashed away from them. This is a very impressive victory and we're going to have a big trifecta here how about rocks princess checking in in third at odds of 70 to 1. 6 11 3 across the board take one more look at your unofficial winner here joy's rocket the daughter of anthony's cross the hall of famer steve asmussen at your winning conditioner for team hanley and parkland thoroughbreds that far side tried to go with her press that pace just couldn't quite keep up in the final stages she settles for a second today we didn't really see many fillies making up ground late i did notice the nine rolling down the middle of the track the grass is blue but she was 12th and last nearly last early on just far too much to do yeah she just kept on going and i think this is i think we're seeing speed do well here. We saw speed do well in the opener. I think that uh, for the uh, Chris Davis runner who held on for second, just got a little bit too, t or just it was a little bit too far with quick tempo. So I think that you really have to pay attention to this because they're setting fast fractions. We saw uh, 21 and four, 44 and four for the half in this six and a half furlong run in the opener with the boys 21 and two and 44 and three. So they're going quick and they're being able to hold on late in these races. Unofficial results on your screen there, 6, 11, 3, 13, and 2 if you played the super high five. Joy's Rocket, the winner of the Songbird Stakes. Last one moves into line. They are at the post. And they're off. Pixelate went to his knees at the start, but quickly recovers. In the meantime, Tyshawn moves out for the early lead down toward the inside. There's Fancy Liquor moving up from between horses. Don Juan Kitten is there in third, up toward the far outside. Ever dangerous, way wide in the center of the course as they head for the first turn. Fancy Liquor ahead in front. Don Juan Kitten is alongside. Tyshawn is third. Ever dangerous is going to be caught wide in fourth. Angelus Warrior is fifth back toward the inside. Spanish Kingdom in close quarters, sixth. Bye-bye Melvin moves by one spot from seventh around the outside. 
side. No word is saving ground in eighth. Mo Reddy is three wide in ninth. And forcible tenth. Pixelate is now in the eleventh position. Headed off the first turn and up the back stretch. Fighting CB is twelfth. The journey to freedom is thirteenth. Reconvene is fourteenth and last. The open quarter went in twenty three point two eight seconds. Fancy liquor leading Don Juan Kitten only by a half length. Up the back stretch. Ever dangerous third ahead between horses. Tyshawn fourth toward the inside. Angelus Warrior fifth. Bye bye Melvin sixth far outside. No word is seventh. Spanish Kingdom enforceable. Then Mo Reddy who's four wide headed to the far turn. It was 47.45 seconds for the opening half mile. Fancy Liquor the leader. Fancy Liquor leads it by a neck. Don Juan Kitten is still there but still second on the outside. Bye bye Melvin caught very wide. Tyshawn toward the inside. Ever dangerous. And Angelus Warrior both in between horses. Mo Reddy has to go about six wide to the top of the stretch. Eight legs off the leader. No word is still far back. Here's Don Juan Kitten putting ahead in front. Moving off the far turn. And Fancy Liquor fights on second. Tyshawn third. Ever dangerous in fourth. Angelus Warrior fifth. No word six toward the rail. Don Juan Kitten narrow lead. Fancy Liquor Ever Dangerous runs on from the outside. Ever Dangerous coming after Don Juan Kitten. Fancy Liquor there toward the inside. Reconvene's going to be running late with Bye Bye Melvin down to the line. Ever Dangerous. Ever Dangerous getting up to take it for Javier Castellano and springing a big upset. You are seeing that correctly. 74 to 1 on the 16 ever dangerous, dangerously drawing in from those also eligibles. Make it two on the day for Javier Castellano. How did he work out this trip from this post position? The Keeneland graduate of the September sale of 2018, the son of Kitten's Joy, just gradually kept on coming. Right now, it looks like the 13 is going to be able to take this race as he settled just off the pace. That's Don Juan Kitten, but just slowly but surely, we see the 16 ever dangerous grind out this victory at this big price Javier never giving up you can see other horses going with him but he just simply had the jump on the closers and that was the difference in this race as he wins by a half of a length half a length across the wire for him and then two lengths separating probably 10 others behind him absolute cavalry charge for home but as you say it was down to that move down to that mid-pack trip sitting the trip having the jump on these horses as they turn for home and there is a look at the son of kittens joy congratulations to reeves thoroughbreds and their partners a big 74 to 1 in the Bryan Station on Ever Dangerous. We talked about paying attention to these AEs drawing in, and hopefully you did with this colt as he comes up with this victory. Uh, this is one of these races where you'd like to see it a few times from, from the start to see how Javier was able to do this. So congratulations uh, to all of the connections here, and um, in a much different fashion than what we saw from him at Belmont, where he was setting the pace, showing the ability to adapt to scenarios. I mean, that, it takes some class, and this is, you know, he I'd mentioned before that he had not shown up in previous uh, turf races, but maybe the good going was more to his liking. Whatever it was, it all comes together. Last one moves into line. They're at the post. And they're off. Wildwood's beauty quick and stride from the outside. Here comes Harmless with some early speed as well. And there's Headland down toward the inside. Harmless head in front. Here's Headland, though, taking the lead in neck. Amy's challenge going to move up and press the issue now from third to second within a head of the leader. Wildwood's Beauty now is fourth out in the center of the track into Chocolate and behind that front group in fifth down toward the inside. And Holy Alliance goes sixth. Royal Charlotte is seventh on the outside. Bye-bye, Jay. And unique factor to complete the field. 22.01 seconds. The time for the opening quarter. Amy's challenge opens up on a two-length lead around the far turn. Now by two and a half. Headland, second and a half length. Harmless third up on the outside, a length and a half. Wildwood's Beauty is fourth toward the outside, into Chocolate. Still back there in fifth at the quarter pole, eight lengths off the lead. Amy's Challenge, the leader as they turn into the stretch, and Amy's Challenge leads it by five lengths to Wildwood's Beauty, who's second toward the outside. Royal Charlotte trying to get going with Unique Factor, both on the far outside, both with a lot of work to do in the final furlong. Amy's Challenge, the leader, into Chocolate comes up the rail late. Unique Factor runs on to the outside of Wildwood's Beauty, but it's Amy's Challenge in front, Amy's challenge, Jose Lescano to win it. Unique factor look to get up on the line to grab second by a head over Wildwood's Beauty in 1 minute 9.17.
a race that was asking for a pace setter, and Amy's challenge filled that role, and we are definitely seeing a trend here on the main track, Matthew. Yeah, but even if the, the track, I think the track is speed favoring, but even on a fair track, you, you let a quality mare get by herself on the lead, they're going to be tough to get by, right? So she was a lone F. It was Louis Saez was the guy aboard the five who tried to put some pressure on Amy's challenge, but it was token pressure, and Lascano had a pretty easy lead about a quarter mile into this race, and it was over. Nobody making up any ground at the end of this race. Late money Mensa like as Amy's challenge goes off as your five to two uh, post time favorite in the McConnell Springs. Yeah, uh, this horse was seven to two when they were moving into line. A lot of money pours in on Amy's challenge. It was the right money, Caden. Yeah, indeed. And Jose Lascano in the right place. He did not break on top, but uh, was able to just ease on up. And by the time they hit a quarter mile and 22, he had the lead pretty comfortably. To have that kind of margin on the field is going to ensure a pretty good finish at the end. She did keep running all the way to uh, stop the clock in 109. The order finish posted on the board here in the McConnell Springs. Two, six, eight, seven, four. Amy's Challenge getting the win at five to two. Amy's Challenge, a dark bear brown mare by Artie Schiller out of the Jump Start Mare Jump Up, bred by Sierra Farm here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And trainer McLean Robertson talking to Gabby Goddett beforehand, just saying throw that last race out. Did not like the track. She clearly likes it here today at Keeneland and makes easy work of this field here in the McConnell Springs. Waiting for prices to come in for race number four. Race number five will be a vastly different race. A mile and five-eighths on the main track here. The Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance coming up in the sponsorship of this mile and five-eighths race. We'll return with more coverage here on the Breeders' Cup Players Show. Last horse going in. They are at the post. And they're off in the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance Stakes. There's Marin Yake, and there's Dak Janiels. Plus Caparfe comes away running in third. Muralist fourth. Danny California fifth, moving up far outside. Here's Signal Man. Signal Man going to be up close, moves up from sixth to fourth to third. Muralist in some awkward traffic down toward the inside. Had to check and drop back several lengths along the rail, back toward the center of the pack. Back up front, Dak Janiels makes the lead, gets over to the rail to the top of the stretch the first time. Signal Man and Plus Caparfe stack up to the outside. Danny California goes fourth. Marin Yake is fifth back toward the inside side as the field moves into the stretch. Signal man between horses contesting the lead. Dak Jandles to the inside. Plus Caparfe joins them. Then job security and fourth now moving up carefully between horses. One lane off the rail with one circuit to go. Marin Yake fifth to the inside. Danny California sixth. Militia man seventh. Muralist is now in the eighth position. Cupid's Claws is ninth. Farmington Road is in the tenth spot. And then Tenfold who is in eleventh. Rise the Guy is in twelfth. Rocketry is thirteenth. Moving on to the next turn, and your to blame is the trailer. Opening quarter went 24.4. It was 48.52 seconds for that first half mile. Dak Janiels, the leader, signal man right alongside. Next separate the top two, and then Plus Caparfait, third far outside, half length off the front pair, and moving up in the center of the track. Job security is fourth to the inside. There's Danny California, again moving up from fifth, regaining fourth by a half length. Marin Yake, sixth against the rail. Cupid's Claws now moves toward the center of the track in seventh. Still six lengths from the front. Then Militia Man and Tenfold. Muralist is next down toward the inside, followed by Farmington Road. Then Rise the Guy, Rocketry. You're to blame is at the back as they head for the far turn. Dak Janiels, Plus Parfait, Signal Man between that pair. That's the three-way battle for the lead, separated by a half length. Here's Danny California going to move to the far outside from fourth within a length and a half of the lead, now moving up to take third. Marin Yake next to the inside, Job Security, then Cupid's Claws on the outside. Tenfold going to be in some traffic around the far turn, looking down toward the rail. Still seven from the front. Dak Chandiels to the top of the stretch, has the lead by a length. Danny California second to the far outside. Pluska Parfait is in third. Mirren Yake tries to join that front group, has to swing to the far outside in fourth. Dak Chandiels the leader. Mirren Yake goes to second, three lengths away, two lengths away. Rocketry has come from deep in the pack, moving up into fourth, but they're in the final furlong. Mirren Yake trying to take the lead away from Dak Daniels. Rocketry is running on from the outside. What a performance by Rocketry from way back to get up to win it for Erad Ortiz Jr. 
rocketry, picking them up and laying them down like a house of cards. A horse who took the Breeders' Cup Marathon at a mile and three quarters at Churchill Downs back in 2018. Now here in 2020 at Keeneland takes the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. And this is his first win since that win back in 2018. And he does it at 11 to 1. Really smart ride by Arado Ortiz. And it was a big gamble he took the way this track was playing. But I think you look at Rocketry's last couple of races, maybe he was a little bit too close to the pace. He's kind of that one run type. You look at his race where he's effective in the marathon at Churchill back in November of 2018. Where was he last early on? So let's take him back. Let's hope the pace is decent. And let's make that one run. And it worked out to perfection for Rocketry, Arado Ortiz, and trainer Jimmy Jerkins, 11 to 1 to close out this early pick five. Yeah, and uh, Caton, uh, Centennial Farms knows what it's like to win at the Breeders' Cup. They had a brilliant mile winner back in 2007 at Monmouth. Longtime participant, and obviously James Jerkins, phenomenal trainer. Yeah, the only runner in the Jimmy Jerkins barn across the country today, and he gets it done in a big way. A lot of confidence to, to ship in with a horse that uh, had not won in such a long time, but he certainly loves these distances, and that was a, a smart ride from a pace standpoint for sure for my Red Ortiz. And not to be overlooked here was the phenomenal second here by Miranaki from some connections who came all the way out to California for their first start in the United States to run in the TVG Pacific Classic. It had been their dream to run in a race like that. Now they find themselves here at Keeneland with a very good second in the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance Stakes. 3, 9, 10, 14, 1 posted on the board. That's 11 to 1, <laughs> over 33 to 1, over 53 to 1, over 9 to 1. Yeah, I mean, Dak Daniels' speed's still good, right? I mean, Dak Daniels was the horse in the lead with Declan Cannon, and, you know, he holds on for third at 53 to 1 after leading a good portion of this race. And uh, to Miranek, yeah, I you know, they kind of like this horse going into the TVG Pacific Classic. Obviously, that race, unbelievably fast, was maximum security's best performance of this year. And now third off the layoff, able to, to drop in class and be very effective in second. So these these exotic, these trifecta and superfecta, I, I, I can't even begin to guess what they're going to pay. Yeah, they're going to be off the charts. And big balloons here in race number five, the Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance Stakes. And that will conclude the undercard because coming up next, we have the first of five consecutive Breeders' Cup races. It's Future Stars Friday at Keeneland Racecourse in Lexington, Kentucky. You're watching the player show coming up next, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. In the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint, Golden Pal comes right out for the lead. Into the sunrise, comes away in second. Bodenheimer had an awkward start, but now recovers, starts to move up through some traffic. Third into second, and Golden Pal there starts to swing out a bit from the inside. That leaves some room for Bodenheimer. Into the sunrise there to the outside, and blame the booze in the center of the course. Those are the top four. Golden Pal has the lead, gets over toward the rail, leads it by a half length into the far turn. And then further back, Dirty Dangle is in sixth. Second of July 7th, Momos is eighth. Cowan is ninth. Mighty Gurkha tenth. You better believe it. Is in 11th around the turn. After five is next on the outside. Then Lip is honor in 12th. Followed by Windy City Red County final. Last of the 14. Golden Pal the leader. Bodenheimer second. Four legs separate the top two. Momos in third. You better believe it. Looks for room toward the rail. Cowan runs from the outside but well behind Golden Pal in the final furlong. A five length lead for Golden Pal. Then Cowan. Then you better believe it. Golden Pal. Cowan runs on from the outside. Golden Golden Pal, Cowan is second. Golden Pal, Golden Pal wins it by a length on the line. Cowan up for second. You better believe it was third. All over the world, Wesley Ward dominates this category, and Golden Pal comes back to the United States to have a crowning moment here in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. How about the early decision here, Matt? A Rat Ortiz Jr. breaks on top clearly, but then takes a hold. Yeah, I don't know if that was by design, Todd. I mean, I, it, it looked like he was kind of hard to handle and got a little bit of rank, you know, a couple hundred yards into this race. I mean, first of all, the thing I take away from this is just the unbelievable gate speed this horse possesses and the athleticism to overcome whatever occurred kind of in the early stages of this race where he was a handful for Rat Ortiz. He went from being a three-length lead. He kind of dropped back to the field. And then, like, in an instance, he settled right back into stride and was three in front. And now he's five in front. And because of what he had to endure in the early 
early stage of this race. He's tired here at the end, but it doesn't matter. He's clear by five, and the race is over. It's an unbelievably gifted, talented racehorse who's a neck away from being undefeated, and that defeat came to the Lear Jet, who we're going to see in the juvenile turf later on. Five and a half furlongs, 102 and four. Caden, what did you see here from Golden Pal and what maybe our Rad Ortiz Jr. was dealing with early? I'm hard-pressed to decide which was more impressive, the way Golden Pal was able to almost give up that lead advantage and then come back again to win so impressively, or the effort by runner-up Cowan, who literally walked out of the starting gate, spotted the field, including Golden Pail on the front end, an abundance of ground, and then really closed the gap at the end a little bit farther, and it might have been perhaps a different outcome, but uh, amazing performance for Golden Pal, who uh, kind of seals the deal as far as his credentials are concerned. Golden Pal taking our first Breeders' Cup race of this Breeders' Cup Championship weekend at Keeneland on Future Stars Friday. Golden Pal is the brightest star here in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint at 4-5. to five. 14, 5, 6. Cowan in second. You better believe it. And third. And congratulations. Our three chimneys. Cheers to the breeder. Goes to Randall E. Lowe, who bred Golden Pal in the Sunshine State of Florida by Uncle Mo out at Coolmore, America's Ashford Stud, out of the brilliant race mare, Lady Shipman, a daughter of Midshipman. This is what Golden Pal was bred to do, and she does it or he does it better than anyone else in the world today, taking the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. Awaiting the prices here for race number six, and then we'll stay on the turf course. Coming up next in race number seven, it'll be the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf presented by Coolmore America, a mile over the good turf here at Keeneland. You're watching and listening to the Breeders' Cup Players Show. Last one moves into line at the post. They're off in the Breeders' Cup. Juvenile turf. There goes out door. Out door, right out for the lead. Fire at will is there toward the inside. Then Cadillac and New Mandate, who's down toward the inside, but out door will have the early lead. Gretzky the Great going to move up on the outside to challenge Fire at will for that second position. New Mandate is fourth in behind that pair. Abiko is fifth toward the outside. Public Sector six back toward the rail. Mutaza Beck three wide in seventh outside of Cadillac and eighth. Barda is ninth. Battleground is wide off the turn. In tenth, Sealaway is eleventh. Devil Walla twelfth. Go Athletico thirteenth. The Learjet is 14th and last 23.64 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Out of door, the leader, midpoint of the back stretch, and out of door leads at three quarters of a length. Gretzky the Great, second by just a length as they head for the far turn. Fire at will is third. Abiko is in fourth. New mandate between horses fifth. Public sector looks for room to the inside sixth. Mutazabek going to be four wide onto the far turn. From seventh, Cadillac is in eighth. Battleground trying to work through some traffic in ninth. Go Atletico is tenth. They're midway on the final turn. Turn and back up front, out of door, continues to lead. Gretzky the Great, out of door, leads at a length and a half. Gretzky the Great, second. Abiko, third to the outside. Fire at will is in fourth. Cadillac is fifth. Mutaza back and seal away, still far back, nearly ten from the front. Out of door, two length lead. Fire at will moves up on the outside. Gretzky the Great is in third. Cadillac fourth. Battleground is fifth on the outside. Fire at will puts ahead in front from out of door in second. Battleground, then Cadillac to the inside. Fire at will to the front and drawing clear for Ricardo Santana Jr. in the juvenile turf. Fire at will with the victory in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Congratulations to the connections here. Mike Maker, Ricardo Santana Jr. Caton, he's had a tactical trip just off the early pace, and we have a 30-1 to 1 winner. He's very professional. He really broke sharply and then rated just as Ricardo Santana Jr. asked him, doling out his position, his speed uh, there, and just shakes the reins at him uh, to take aim on out a door who had uh, gamely sat the trip just kind of ideally on the front end with things his own way. Gets a little tired here as you see fire at will just striding out beautifully to cross the finish line in front for Kirk Wyckoff and the Three Diamonds Farm. Close in behind. It looks like Battleground did rally on for second today, 7-2, to two, I believe, at post time on the nine in here. Simon, in terms of a lot of the European horses, a few of them having trouble settling early on off that pace. Battleground the only one to be heard from late. 
Yeah, he rallied late. The horse that you and I like, New Mandate, was very aggressive early in between horses. Didn't get much cover, was kind of three wide, saw daylight, and offered nothing through the stretch run, was eased up out of it. But uh, the only horse really finishing fire at will, Mike Maker, kind of bringing this horse in under the radar. Nobody really talked about him all week long, goes off at a big price. And Mike Maker, the turf plus Keeneland, that's a, a triumvirate that we're used to talking about every spring and every fall at the meet. He seems to dominate these types of races. And Fire at Will dominated the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf here this afternoon. And Mike Maker with so much momentum just off the fall meet, and you're seeing that continue on with his horses here. Big celebration across the wire as well from Ricardo Santana Jr. Pointing to the crowd, pleased with his performance. And, of course, Fire at Will, the Keeneland graduate, the son of Declaration of War out of the Kitten's Joy Mayor Flirt. Congratulations to Three Diamonds Farm, her, his breeders as well, Troy Rankin, right here in Kentucky. And we will have some very big prices after this Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Still waiting for them to sort out the results of that photo in terms of second, third, and fourth today. And there's a look at those results. So Battleground indeed was second. At post time, 7 to 2, Outdoor finishing third at 9 to 1. Cadillac would follow after settling after a bit of a fight in the early stages, finally found himself a good spot. He finishes fourth, and the super high five completed by Seal Away at 9 to 1. So a Euros in three of the top five spots. Fire at will. Your victor for Mike Maker. We'll have those prices coming up just as soon as it does go official. Kate, and taking a look at our winner here, uh, he left it out there on the racetrack, but he certainly doesn't look any worse for the wear off that big performance. No, and I think versatility is going to be a strength for him going forward as uh, the son of Declaration of War was able to have everything his own way on the front end when he won the Pilgrim Stakes in his uh, start prior to the Breeders' Cup. But the fact that he was able to establish that position down on the inside and Ricardo Santana was able to get him to settle into that comfortable rhythm off the pace setter um, bodes well going forward. That's three straight beautiful races from Fire at Will showing a lot of versatility in terms of distance as well as style. And I would also say that he sure looked like he could have continued on a bit farther than uh, just the mile today. Simon, in terms of that last race and, and the price that we get on Fire at Will today at 30 to 1, he's coming off a victory in a grade two, but with the slow early tempo, was he just not respected enough paramutually off that win? They're off in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. V. Quist and Day out of the office. These two come to the front in the opening strides. Princess Noor is there up toward the outside and Simply Ravishing is next, followed by Thoughtfully Between Horses Girl Daddy on the outside and Crazy Beautiful at the back as the field moves into the first turn. Day out of the office, the leader. Day out of the office, clear with the lead, gets over toward the inside, leads it a length. Princess Noor, second ahead, just to the outside of V. Quist, who's third by a length. Girl Daddy, fourth and neck to the outside of Simply Ravishing, who's fifth in Between Horses. Crazy Daisy Beautiful is in sixth and thoughtfully has shuffled out to last. 23.3 seconds, the time for that opening quarter. Day out of the office, the leader up the back stretch at Keeneland at the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. On top by a length, Princess Noor, second on the outside by a half length. Vequist is third, three quarters of a length. Girl Daddy, fourth up on the outside. Simply Ravishing, fifth in between horses. Just over three lengths from the front. Crazy Beautiful, thoughtfully at the back. 47.12 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Day out of the office. The leader by a length onto the far turn. Princess Noor is second. And then Girl Daddy, who moves into contention, a closer third now up on the outside. Third by half length. Vequist and fourth. They're at the quarter pole. Simply Ravishing is fifth. And she is still running some six lengths from the front to the top of the short stretch. Day out of the office. Opening up on a three-length lead as they turn for home. Vequist up the inside. Princess Noor is still there on the outside. Girl Daddy still far back with Simply Ravishing. Vequist Quest is coming up the rail. Here's VQuest up the inside. Now to challenge day out of the office. And VQuest just keeps on running. VQuest, Joel Rosario to win the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Rolling the dice along the pine. Joel Rosario and Vquist upset the field in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Turning for home, Simon, it looked like day out of the office was absolutely on cruise control. Princess Noor came to her. She turned her way but could not respond to Vquist. 
Yeah, no excuses for the two major players in here. Dowd at the office had everything her own way. Princess Noor loomed a threat turning for home. Day at the office disposed of her, and in deep stretch, we are looking for a horse from off the pace. Here comes Vequist, perfectly timed right by Ja Rosario, up the rail here, and wins going away for Gary Barber and Robert Reed. Butch Reed, this is a big win for him, Ja Rosario, daughter of Nyquist. Nyquist, who won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile back in 2050 here, now sires the winner of the 2020 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Butch Reed applies his trade in Pennsylvania, longtime horseman, quality horseman, and now on the biggest stage, he delivers with V-Quist here, the beaten favorite last time out in the Frisette today out of the office. That race proved to be a key race here today as those two horses absolutely out of the Frisette dominated the action here in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And then there are the silks of owner Gary Barber. He is in line for a huge weekend here at the Breeders' Cup with horses in just about every division. And this is going to be a satisfying win for him and his partners, Vquist taking the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies and look at the final time. A mile and a sixteenth, Caton, and 142 and one. And Vquist um, really showing something there with her ability to maintain that position on the inside and then get faster at each stage of the game. It's not easy to come from off the pace uh, when the pace is soft in the early stages, but Joel Rosario was riding with great confidence to establish that position to save all the ground and to allow Vquist to be able to have that uh, run at the end. It was just a very impressive performance. Uh, the three day out of the office holding on just barely over Girl Daddy, who ran in spots and came from off the pace at the middle part of the racetrack. You wonder if there is anything to the ground loss there or if it's simply a matter of Vequist just being the best on the day. If this is any indication, don't take anything for granted. Coming up later in the TVG Breeders' Cup Juvenile presented by the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. And you take a look at this field with Vquist upsetting at 6-1. to one. It was so many great resumes in here. And now you start to think about the big races for three-year-olds last year, or looking ahead to next year, rather. And, Simon, one thing with Gary Barber, that's what his stable is in it for. So she's going to be on the path to the big races for three-year-old fillies next year. Yeah, she certainly is. And she's obviously relished the two turns here for the first time. We've talked about a pedigree. Look at it. By Nyquist, Kentucky Derby winner out of a mare by Mineshaft, who was a very good older horse, won the Jockey Club Gold Cup, of course. So lots of distance there. And a horse who really moved forward with the two turns and the new dynamic here in the extra real estate, where some of, us, some of the other fillies in here might have regressed and stepped back a little bit. She thrived on the added distance. Posted on the board, 23517 Vequist over Day Out of the Office, over Girl Daddy, over Simply Ravishing, over Princess Noor. Waiting for these prices to come in and waiting with a Longines official timepiece. Who is the official partner here? Shot with Plum Ali as they load in in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. We'll send it up to track announcer Kurt Becker standing by with the call. Last one goes in, they're at the post. They're off in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf, and there goes Ant Pearl. Ant Pearl, wasting no time, goes right out for the early lead, but company in the form of Campanelli. Royal Approval comes away in third. Spanish Love Affair fourth up on the outside as they enter the first turn. Union Gables a wide fifth. And then Miss Amulet, who hugs the rail, saves ground in sixth, all to seventh. In between horses, Plum Ali is eighth. Editor at large to her outside is in ninth. Nazuna is tenth. Madone, eleventh on her outside. Then a gap of three back to Mother Earth in twelfth. Invincible Gal, thirteenth. Udna Dada is fourteenth. And last, it was 22.55 seconds for the opening quarter. Ant Pearl is the leader. Ant Pearl has opened up by three and a half lengths, midpoint of the backstretch. Campanelli has backed away into second by a length and a half. And then Spanish Love Affair, who's third, three quarters of a length. 
And then Royal Approval fourth to the inside after an opening half mile in 47.3 seconds. They enter the far turn. Aunt Pearl, the leader, by three lengths. Campanelli, second a length. Spanish Love Affair, third. Royal Approval in fourth. Editor at large swings wide around the turn. In fifth, still seven lengths off the lead. Union Gables, then Madone. Miss Ambulet down toward the inside. Still has nine lengths to make up. A quarter mile to go. And Aunt Pearl, the leader. Aunt Pearl with a five-length advantage back to Campanelli. Spanish Love Affair is third on the outside. Editor at large dives toward the rail in fourth. Aunt Pearl, final furlong. Leads it by five. Editor at large up the inside second. Campanelli is in third. And then a late charge from Miss Amulet and Mother Pearl well behind Ant. Pearl, who wins it, Aunt Pearl by five. Mother Earth rallied up for second around the outside of Miss Amulet in one minute, 35.71 seconds. Aunt Pearl, two-year-old Philly by Lope de Vega, Ford trainer Brad Cox, Laurent Giroux in the irons, takes them wire to wire, gets comfortable on the front end, Matt, and she never looks back. Really smart front end ride from Laurent Giroux. So you need the lead with Aunt Pearl. So I'm going to work a little bit to make sure I get the lead. And so you go 22-2 and two for the opening quarter, and you win the race the second quarter. If those fractions are legit. 25-1 and one second quarter, race over. Race over. Get the lead, gain control, slow things down, have plenty left late. Game plan to perfection for Aunt Pearl, for Aunt Drew, Brad Cox. Campanelli broke well, was up there with her in the early stages, but we heard the intent to rate her, take her off a little bit. She backed down, and that left Aunt Pearl just by herself. Yeah, I, you know, I think in hindsight, it's real easy for all of us, right? To, mm -hmm. You know, maybe you go after Aunt Pearl. You, you know, she, you know, she had to work to get that easy lead, but then you don't let her just kind of relax in that second quarter. And once she was able to do that, a filly with, with these kind of gifts. And you mentioned she had to grow up mentally today. I think she, she showed that the, the physical skills, now the mental skills, on par with one another. She absolutely did. So professional this afternoon. As a couple of the Euros check in second and third, it was very close behind. It looks like the eight Mother Earth got up over. Amulet, both of whom ran solid races in here. Yeah, Mother Earth was flying yeah. at the end of the race, right? So Mother Earth, big performance, getting better. She ran a solid third at 18-1 to at Newmarket last month. Uh, she, she gets away from pretty gorgeous, and uh, I mean, she runs an Aunt Pearl, but she runs very well in defeat. Another filly by Lope de Vega, of course, the sire of newspaper of record who won this race a couple of years ago. Cheers to the breeders, Akiri Descharm and Bally Lynch Stud. Congratulations to you, of course, trainer Brad Cox, Mike Dub, Madikit Stables and the Elkstone Group and, and others. As this barn, Matt, we've become very accustomed to seeing Brad Cox in the winner's circle on Breeders' Cup weekend. Simon, thoughts on this performance here? Yeah, I thought it was a very impressive performance. I agree with Matt's uh, comments. I was looking at the screen and the fractions, and Florent Giroux did a masterful job. He was committed. He was part committed at the start of this race to get the lead. And once you've made that decision, you're all in at that point. You just hope nobody chases you, and they didn't. And the ability to slow this horse down to 25 the second quarter was absolutely the key point in this race. That was the difference maker. I think if a couple of horses had challenged on um, Pearl, it might have been a different story or a smaller winning margin. But that ability to, to just relax, take a second breath and regroup in the middle portion of the race uh, gives these horses on the grass the ability to finish so strong. She kicked away from the rest of the field. Visually very impressive performance. Great ride by Florence Giroux. They've got a good one on their hands for sure as we saw that mental maturity we were looking for. Here's a look at the order of finishes. Mother Earth did check in second. Miss Amulet Campanelli will have to settle for fourth. Plum Ali in fifth as the Irish breads, Matt. One, two, three, four in here. Yeah, I, Naomi, you know, liked Miss Amulet. That was, a, that was a good call. She ran really well. She was coming on, too. Mother Earth kind of got her late to secure second. Miss Amulet, though, at a big prize finishing third. I'm actually, you know, Campanelli, I'm surprised she even held on for fourth in that race. It shows you her ability, too, to, to really never be comfortable, to, to, to be that far off the pace, and to still manage to, uh, to finish fourth in this Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf. A big performance from your winner, Aunt Pearl, as we see the final odds there. She went off at 5-2. to two. The money was right on this one. It's been a conversation today. Horses coming in the, on Future Stars Friday without a blemish on their record. It is rare even with a lightly raced filly, to see at this stage of the game as they just keep that win streak extending, Matt. She hasn't trailed yet at any point in a race, right? I mean, wire to wire at Churchill and, and a maiden by five. Then 
the Jessamine here crushes by two and a half lengths wire to wire in, in, in a fairly easy win here as well. So she's really never been challenged any boy point in her career. And, um, you know, we'll see. It's going to happen at some point, but there's no reason to think that she won't be able to shake another horse off either. She's a she's a very special filly. And congratulations, as you met, as you mentioned, to the connections. We call it Future Stars Friday for a reason. There's a good one here. Aunt Pearl, the Irish bed filly by Lope de Vega, the winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf. Cup Juvenile presented by Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. First wire at the post. They're off in the Juvenile. There goes Jackie's Warrior out for the lead. There's Dreamer's Disease out showing early speed. And Classier is up close in between that pair. Dreamer's Disease striding forward for the lead as they move into the first turn past Jackie's Warrior. There goes Classier taking second. Jackie's Warrior shuffled to third. Likeable now moves up, takes over that third spot, boosts Jackie's Warrior back into fourth as they move around the turn. Next is in fifth and a break of nearly five more lengths as they hit the back stretch to Hot Rod Charlie. Hot Rod Charlie moves up on the outside into the sixth position. Position around King Fury 7th essential quality back in 8th reinvestment risk is ninth. calibrate is in 10th position and then Camp Hope who's 11th to the inside Rumbauer 12th the margin of eight more lengths sitting on go is far far back next to last and keep me in mind is the trailer it was 22.58 at the quarter 45.31 seconds for the opening half mile Dreamer's Disease, the leader, three quarters of a length into the far turn. Likeable is second. Here's Jackie's Warrior moving up third on the outside around Classier and fourth. Jackie's Warrior now taking second, a length and a half off the lead. Further back, Hot Rod Charlie picks up several positions. So does Essential Quality, moving up three and five lengths respectively at the quarter pole within Dreamer's Disease and Jackie's Warrior as they turn into the short stretch and Hot Rod Charlie keeps moving up on the outside. Hot Rod Charlie moves up to challenge Jackie. Jackie's Warrior, as the field moves off the turn, essential quality is still third and still moving at the leaders from the outside. Final furlong of the juvenile, essential quality coming forward for the lead. Late run from Keep Me In Mind, Hot Rod Charlie to the inside, essential quality, and Luis Saez have won the TVG Breeders' Cup Juvenile, one minute, 42.09 seconds. What a performance here from Essential Quality. Brad Cox has had himself a day here on Future Stars Friday. Caden, let's go to the replay. Just a perfect trip for Essential Quality. He sat off the pace, but the pace was stiff early on, and you have to spot those blue silks uh, making the move. Now he's going to have to go the Highland route, uh, circling the pace setters, but the pace was pretty torrid, and none of the horses on the front end were able to ever really settle into a very comfortable rhythm uh, with challenges uh, from many different positions. But there you see Essential Quality just kicking it into gear. He strikes you as the type that's going to get even better as the distances get longer, and certainly handled uh, all the challenges in involved to get the victory under Luis Saez, who I believe is celebrating his first Breeders' Cup victory. Simon, this was a very classy performance from Essential Quality. Just did everything right. There was the setup for him, but Luis Saez rode this race perfectly. Yeah, we were talking about track, the way the track was playing and the way the race was going to shape up. And I thought before, and as I mentioned, I thought he was going to show the ability to rate. He got the lead last time just by because he was better than those other horses. And we've seen the two two-term races, the juvenile fillies and this race, the ability to come from off the pace. So this track is playing fair. I think the sprint races, obviously the quickest horses went to the front and won e uh, easily earlier. But I think the ability to come from off the pace has uh, shown that this track is playing fair and a great performance here, a horse that, uh, you know, made a real name for himself this afternoon and is a horse to look forward to with that pedigree, Mike. There's no doubt he's going to get better in the transition from two to three. Playing fair, still playing fast, but playing fair. You can win from different spots on the racetrack. The times are coming back quite quickly. And I'll tell you what, Doug O'Neill has never run in a TVG Breeders' Cup Juvenile at Keeneland that he didn't like. Winning it five years ago with Nyquist, Hot Rod Charlie Caton made a big move, looked like was going to get there before Essential Quality picked him up. Yeah, he really did. Um, Hot Rod Charlie certainly outran his odds and, and was very game in defeat. Um, but I will say that essential quality is a little misleading because he doesn't have that brilliant, quick 
burst of acceleration. He's uh, the type that just gradually gets to you, um, but seems to know his way to the winner's circle and to the wire especially, um, which is the key for a very good horse, I think, in this case, bred by Godolphin, who, of course, owns uh, Essential Quality. Son of Tappet, uh, to me, is the type that will get even better as he gets a little bit more ground to work with. We'll get to the jubilant celebration in just a moment. Simon, we have to talk about the favorite in Jackie's Warrior. Sat a pretty good trip, was wide throughout. I think this horse probably covered a lot more ground than it appeared on that pan view. Yeah, I think you're right. He was he was clear, but he was wide and giving up ground. And there was some question marks for me going in with the distance. And I think that that proved to be the case here, Mike. I'm not, I'm not so sure that the wide trip was uh, the reason for his defeat. I mean, there was some pedigree question marks there about his ability to get two turns. I thought physically looking at him, he would get it. But uh, it just wasn't to be this afternoon here in the horse that's bred for the distance and, and the ground. And a good-looking son of Tappet. Look at him walk back there. True professional. Showed a lot of talent earlier this week. We've had a, our cameras on him all week long at breakfast at the Breeders' Cup. And uh, a very good-looking individual and got the mind to go with it. Kate, the inception of the Breeders' Cup was to settle year-end honors. This is our championship two days of racing. Did we settle two-year-old championship with essential quality? Oh, I think so. I mean, that was a pretty decisive victory for him at a distance of ground on the biggest stage and showing that his last was uh, no fluke. I, I think he'll be the champion. Let's also talk about the day that Brad Cox is having. He has more runners in tomorrow, Simon. He's a trainer that has really become one of the top stables in the U.S., and you're seeing his horses perform at their peaks on the biggest day. It's one thing to win a lot of races. It's another to do it on a stage like this. Yeah, I know. We get to see the, the swan song of Monomoy Girl tomorrow in the Breeders' Cup distaff, and arguably that's probably the, the filly on the mare now that, that put him on the map as far as the big stage several years ago. So he's got a full hand tomorrow with Monomoy Girl. Arklo, he's been touting all week, who's going to be a big number in the Breeders' Cup turf. So, yeah, big weekend just getting kicked off here for Brad Cox. It's amazing to think his first grade one win was with Monomoy Girl. Had a few more since.